Este, this video is uh, one in a series of uh, associated with the book Statistical Modeling with Art that I wrote and was published um, by Oxford University Press in 2023. So today I'm going to talk about uh, the issue of parameter estimation, probably the main task of uh, statistics. Then to talk about the base rule and uh, illustrate its use in statistics. Uh, why this uh, statement is true, which is the basis of the simplification of the use of the base rule in the estimation of parameters. Then to talk about the main algorithm responsible for the current popularity of Bayesian methods, the MCMC algorithm, and then which is going to be illustrated doing some numerical simulations and to show where uh, we will also show uh, some other algorithms. And finally, the main differences between the frequentist and the Bayesian views of statistics. So <clears throat> parameter estimation is the main goal uh, of statistics, uh, since the estimating of the parameters of uh, statistical models allows predicting the probability of observing every value of the response variables and to establish relationships between uh, these response variables and the explanatory variables. And there are three main methods to do that. These squares created by Gauss in the early 19th century that allows estimating parameters only when the response variable has a normal distribution and together with a few other simplifying assumptions. And is the main, still is the main method taught in many introductory courses of statistics. The second is maximum likelihood created by Fisher, Ronald Fisher in 1922 and is valid for any probability distribution of the response variable y. Its uh, estimates are identical to those of the least squares that only apply to the restricted case when y, the response variable, follows a normal distribution. Uh, the use of the maximum likelihood method was uh, the topic of a previous video in this series. And finally, today, um, we are, I'm going to talk about uh, Bayesian methods that are based on progressive developments based on applying base rules that require the use of MCMC type of algorithm, which is the subject matter of today's video. So base rule, uh, Bayes, uh, in his posthumous paper, the, use, uh, the equation stated uh, here in the screen, the probability of A given B times the probability of B equals the probability of B given A, event A, times the probability of occurrence of event A. This is a non-controversial statement obtained from simply conditional events A and B, the probabilities of conditional events A and B. So uh, let's first see a concrete application of this rule involving the interpretation of the PSA test to detect prostatic cancer. The PSA test is a clinical test based on the concentration of an antigen, uh, the prostate-specific antigen in a uh, um, the blood that allows to detect, uh, uh, hopefully, to detect prostatic cancer. So let A be uh, uh, the condition of having prostatic cancer, and B and B uh, be the uh, positive PSA test result. So substituting in the above equations, we now have what we want to know at the left hand side is the probability of having cancer, being ill, given the a positive test, this is a given, we already received the test, equals the probability of having a positive test given that the person has cancer times the probability of suffering cancer divided by the probability of having a positive test. This is simply uh, obtained from the above equation after substitutions. So having a positive test, what we really want to know is, uh, is not the test result that we know, but the probabilities or the chances of being actually ill. So every clinical test has a sensitivity and a specificity. These are, which are the probabilities of making a correct diagnosis. The sensitivity is the probability of having <coughs> a positive test given that you have a disease, in this case cancer, and the specificity the probability of a negative result given that you are not ill. These are properties of the test and you must ask your physician uh, uh, about any clinical procedure. So the P for the PSA test, its sensitivity is uh, 0.14 and its uh, specificity is 0.33. <coughs> so a positive uh, PSA test result could arise 
from two possible sources. First, a true positive test, that's a correct result, and a false positive test, that's, of course, an error. So the denominator in the previous equation uh, uh, becomes, uh, the becomes the following sum. First is the probability of having <coughs> a positive test given that you have cancer ta times the probability of having cancer, and which is a true positive, and the probability of having a positive test given that you are not ill times the probability of not being ill. That would be a false positive. So substituting in the above in the question of the previous slide, now we have a, a set of uh, a, a, a more complex expression, which is uh, not really complicated. So this uh, term here, the probability of a positive test given that you have a cancer is the uh, uh, sensibility of the test, which we know. And then what we don't know is the probability of having cancer. Okay, in order to solve the equation, we need this value, and in order to estimate it, uh, one way of doing it is to uh, obtain the ratio of cases detected of the disease, cancer, prostatic cancer in this case, in a susceptible population, cancer, prostatic cancer only happens, or mostly happens, to men older than 40 years in a given country in a given year. So I took, uh, I took the data that I found in the internet for the USA, but you can do it for any country of, of your choice. So in the, in the USA, it were roughly 175,000 cases of prostatic, prostatic cancers detected in 2018. For a population of thir, uh, uh, three, uh, 320 million people, these 320 million people includes every individual, so there is an even sex ratio, so and 40% of the population is older than 40 years. So based on these numbers, which we, I can, can obtain easily in the internet, I obtained the probability, the incidence of cancers, the probability of having cancer in the USA in 2018 as this ratio. This is 320, this is the number of prostatic cancer cases detected. This is uh, the population size in the US times 0.5, which is the sex ratio, times 0.4, which is the proportion of the population older than 40 years. And this gives you roughly, to uh, simplify matters, something that 1 in 365. Then I replace the value in the, in the above equation, and the probability of having cancer given that you receive a positive test of the PSA test is roughly 1 in 740. Okay? So this shows how we can calculate the probability of the cause, that is, cancer, given that we have an observed effect, which is the uh, positive test result. Now turning to statistics, let's assume now that Y is, are the counts of an animal, the abundance of an animal, and let's assume that Y follows a uh, Poisson distribution with a parameter mu. So the base rule now becomes the probability of mu given the data, the counts, that we, that we have in hand equals the probability of the data given a certain value of the parameter y times the probability of the parameter y divided by the probability of obtaining the data. So uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, see, let's discuss more precisely uh, the terms in this equation because they are important for what follows. So uh, the goal of the statistical of Bayesian statistical uh, estimation is to obtain the, what we call the posterior distribution. It's the probability distribution of the parameter after we uh, took into account the data, after including the data. Uh, in the other, at the, at the right hand side, we have the prior distribution, which is what we knew about the values and the values of the parameter before actually seeing the data. Uh, the, uh, this term is the likelihood, which was the subject matter of the previous video in this series. And the denominator is the probability of obtaining the data for all possible values of the parameter y, the parameter that of the probability distribution that we are using to modeling the response variable. So I want now to uh, address this issue as to why the previous equation uh, is uh, simplified in this way. So I repeat the previous equation. So uh, what we are, what we are as, when we are making this statement, we are simply disregarding the denominator here in the, in the equation. 
So let us see, let's see why, why that happens. So the probability of, uh, pro the denominator is the probability of obtaining the data for all possible values of the parameter mu, okay? And in order to obtain that, we simply uh, need to compute sum, this uh, integral is the sum for the different values of the parameter mu of this, uh, uh, of, uh, of the probability of obtaining the data for uh, Given a given parameter mu times the probability of uh, the parameter mu. This is, of course, the posterior distribution. So this is simply the sum of the products of the likelihood times the prior. So magically, let's assume, for the sake of the example, that uh, for some reason, the parameter mu can only take two possible values. That means that we can substitute this integral by just simply a sum these uh, two ma values that uh, magically uh, the parameter mu can assume are 1.32 and 1.35. So the above equation becomes simply these sums. So once we calculate this uh, by some means, this sum, this becomes a number. This probability of data becomes simply a number, which is a scaling factor that is very hard to calculate. Here is very simple because we assume magically that this could only have two values, but you need to, would, would need to realistically do it for all possible values of the parameter mu. So this uh, numerical calculation of the probability of, of data is a lot harder for models uh, that has many parameters with many parameters. For instance, let y the response variables be some probability distribution with three parameters. So in this case, the probability of data would need to integrate for the posterior distribution for these three parameters, theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3. So if we took a, which is very scary, so let's take a brute force approach. So if we were to choose 10, uh, 1,000 possible values per parameter, there would be 1,000 to the 3, that is 10 to the 9 triplets, that is combinations of theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3 to evaluate in order to calculate uh, the denominator, the uh, ugly looking denominator of this equation. This is known as a course of dimensionality in that the number of uh, uh, situations, in this case parameter, triplets of parameters values to consider increase fast as the model uh, has more parameters. Besides, these calculations, as, we, as I argue in the previous slides, is not strictly necessary. So at the end of the day, is this probability of data is a number that merely standardizes the numerator, which is the only thing that matters in Bayesian statistical inference. Okay, so let's now turn into the Markov chain Monte Carlo. The main equation of the uh, of Bayesian uh, parameter estimation is this one, now discussed for a few times. So Bayes rules, uh, the use of this equation rarely allows analytical solutions are uh, only for certain uh, statistical models, certain likelihoods, and certain prior distributions. This is the point, the point that uh, made uh, Fisher uh, disregard completely and hate Bayesian uh, procedures during all his lifetime. So let's assume again that we have a count that is modeled with a Poisson distribution uh, with the expression, this is the expression of the Poisson distribution, well known by everybody. So MCMC is a class of methods that allow to obtain the posterior distribution of the parameter Y, the posterior distribution of the parameter Y from its prior distribution, which are the set of plausible parameter values, possible values of the parameter Y before we actually saw the data, the evidence that we have at hand, and the likelihood which conveys the information contained in the data. So this uh, algorithm was proposed in a completely different context of integrating very complex differential equations by Metropolis et al. and was uh, published in a journal of physical chemistry and rediscovered by uh, Gehman and Gehman in the context of image analysis and by Gelf and, and Smith in a more proper uh, uh, setup of uh, Bayesian statistics in the 1990s, and it was a game changer, because this uh, applying this algorithm allowed to use uh, Bayesian methods 
for any conceivable problem that we can write. So let's uh, dissect the name. So MCMC is called this way because it contains a Markov chain that generates candidate values of the parameter mu, in this case, and because the acceptance criteria of these plausible values involves the use of probabilistic rule, which is the Monte Carlo part of the name. So uh, the Markov chain is simply a stochastic process that generates a sequence of candidate values of the parameter or parameters, if there is more than one, in which the current value is only a function of the previous one. This is a short-term process. The simplest possible Markov chain is uh, known in the context of a time series as an autoregressive process of the first order in which the k, the k plus one value of uh, the parameter mu is a function of the previous value plus a random shift. And this random shift, for instance, is a number extracted from a normal distribution with a mean of zero, meaning it's centered in the previous value and the uh, standard deviation mu. This standard deviation mu regulates how far from the current value, mu k, would be the next candidate value of uh, the parameter. Written in this way, the Markov chain simply drifts and does not converge, so we need an accepted criteria for the values of mu of y. So for Poisson counts, uh, let's start by describing the, uh, the prior distribution. That is, what do we know about the, the values, plausible values of mu before actually seeing the data? First, we know that the parameter is positive, regardless of the data, and we could use perhaps previous data from the same population or species or similar sites that could provide values of the mean upper and maybe a frequency distribution or if there were several mean values uh, estimated. For instance, we could use the log normal distribution, which is uh, only valid for strictly positive uh, parameters such as mu. And so, so here we have different combinations of means and standard deviations of the log normal distributions uh, that perhaps could perhaps reflect what we know of the parameter mu. Say, if we take the red, the red uh, option, it means that we would expect uh, parameter va values of the parameter mu around 0.5 would be more likely and very unlikely to have values larger than, say, 7.5. This is what it means. So uh, for now, and for simplicity, let's blindly select one of these uh, chosen uh, uh, log normal distributions to reflect the possible prior distribution of this parameter. So we have already said that uh, the likelihood part would be uh, the Poisson distribution, but it could actually be something else. So, <coughs> so our response variable y follows a Poisson distribution, and this Poisson distribution, this parameter, this is, that would be the likelihood, and this Poisson distribution, the prior distribution of it, with, uh, perdón, sorry, the prior distribution of mu, the parameter of the Poisson distribution, would be modeled using a log normal distribution, uh, the, whose parameters are, are known in the, in the Bayesian jargon as hyperparameters a feature that we are not going to discuss uh, currently. So based on these two components, may the MCNC algorithms, algorithm makes a stochastic simulation to generate the posterior distribution of the parameter mu of y, which is the goal of the analysis. So let's illustrate that. So the original version of this algorithm involved seven steps. So I'm going to illustrate these seven steps then uh, show the codes to write a function in R to a code for a very simple MCMC algorithm and show its results. So first we need to generate the first value of the chain. This is the prior distribution. Let's assume that we took one value at random. Let's assume this first value is 8.48, which uh, we didn't identify there. Well, then we calculate the log likelihood of all data for this candidate value of 8.48. This we are going to use, do it uh, using the likelihood profile function uh, that was obtained in the previous video of this series. So uh, have a look at it if you haven't. So given uh, this value of uh, the parameter of 8.48, we can calculate 
with the function that we wrote and showed in the previous video, we can calculate the uh, log total likelihood, and that would be minus 214.7. Then we generate a second value, let's assume for some reason that is a uh, 1.35, and let's calculate, that would be around here, some unlikely value, but that's the value that happens to be, we are going to consider and let's uh, calculate the log likelihood of this uh, second kind of this candidate value, and that happens to be minus one uh, 172.09. So we know how we now have <coughs> the probabilities of two uh, candidate values of for the parameter mu 8.48 and 1.35, and the log likelihood for all the data. Uh, given these two candidate values. What we do now is uh, we, f we then calculate the log of the, of the prior probabilities in a simple manner. And then knowing uh, the fundamental equation of, of uh, Bayesian estimation, what we do is we apply logarithms in, in the two sides to transform this product into a sum. So the log of the posterior would be the log likelihood which we have for the two parameter values, so the log of the prior, which we just calculated for the two uh, values that we have. So we, the, we now compute the log of the posterior probability for these two candidate values, 8.48 of the parameter, 8.48 and 135, and that would be simply these two sums. These two sums are reduced, uh, are transformed uh, as a ratio, converted into a ratio, and that ratio are, happens to be 0.67. So we now have two candidate values for the parameters, uh, <coughs> the parameter of the Poisson distribution, the mu. So this uh, ratio combines the support of the data and the prior evidence for the two possible candidate values. So we now have to <coughs> these two candidate values, and we need to decide whether the chain moves from its initial value to the next candidate value, 1.38. That is, we need to decide whether this new candidate value 1.35 is going to be accepted or not. And the way of doing it is to use a probabilistic acceptance criterion, which is to calculate the minimum of these uh, two features, which is the, the log of the posterior for the parameter value mu2 and the log of the posterior for the parameter value mu1 and then, which ha happens to be 0 0.67, uh, as we know. So we are going to accept <coughs> the second candidate, the second value, 1.35, if applying a probabilistic rule. And this probabilistic rule means, uh, involves comparing a randomly sampled number in the unit interval with r, with the uh, coefficient r that we just calculated. So we drew a number from uh, this uniform uh, distribution in the unit interval, and that happens to be 0 .40, 0 0.54. And in this case, we accept the next value, 1.35, and then the chain moved from uh, uh, 8.48 to 135. <coughs> so, uh, of course, these uh, seven steps are going to be repeated many, 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 many times. So one feature of this, uh, of having this uh, stochastic acceptance rule, is that sometimes uh, the chain may even reject by chance uh, uh, a, a parameter value that has a large uh, posterior probability. This will allow the, uh, the the algorithm to explore a whole range of values of these parameters of this parameter, this parameter in order to uncover the posterior distribution. We are going to show that in, uh, in a second. So this basic algorithm can be written in R. First, we write a, a data frame. Uh, that we, we generate an empty data frame uh, and label uh, its, uh, this, this data frame, uh, the, its, uh, its column, uh, label it as min. Then we give the first candidate value for this mean, that would be the mean of the Poisson distribution, and then we write a loop. 
that goes from two to five thousand. That is, we are going to finish with five thousand values of estimate estimates of the mean of the Poisson distribution. So we first uh, uh, get the value of the the current value of the parameter. Then we generate the the next proposed value of the parameter, which are uh, uh, from this, uh, nor using this normal distribution, could be any distribution which is going to use normal. So this is going to be centered in 3.5, which is the first value that we assign. So the next value is likely, the next candidate value is likely to be between point, uh, between 2.5 and 4.5 values of the mean. Now we compute <coughs> the posterior probability for the proposed value and compute the uh, posterior probability of the current value. We are simply applying this equation, equation that we illustrated in the, in the previous slide. And then we calculate the coefficient r, and then we, which is uh, this equation, and then we compute, and then we compute, the accept we use the acceptance rule, and if the coefficient is accepted, uh, its value is stored, if the coefficient is not accepted, another value will be tried. And this is done 5,000 times. And after doing this, we obtain uh, a set of values of the mean, that is the parameter of the Poisson distribution, ranging from 2.26 to almost 4, uh, with a mean of 305, 307, sorry, and we can compute the density distribution of this uh, uh, posterior distribution. Uh, this is equivalent to a histogram. Notice that this is not a theoretical curve. The wiggly na nature of this curve shows that it was simulated. It was simulated and obtained after examining many potential values that uh, this parameter could have. So this posterior distribution summarizes all that can be known about this parameter for this data, given the knowledge that we have provided as a prior distribution. So we can also compute the, what is called the credibility intervals uh, of the parameters. Since this is a true probability distribution, we can now say that the probability that the parameter is between uh, 2.59 and uh, 3.57 is exactly 0.95. This is the probability that the parameter lies within a range, which are these uh, uh, quantiles, 2.5 and 97.5 quantiles of this distribution. So it can be proven that the, the Markov chain Monte Carlo, this Markov chain converges to the true distribution even when we do not know its actual analytical expression. Uh, what we have obtained is a numerical solution to the general problem of parameter estimation. So there are certain issues of quality control that we need to check, and that will be the subject of the coming of the next video in this series. So have a look at it. So there are many, many variants for basic MCMC algorithm, such as the Metropolis Hastings, Gibbs, Inla, Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, and many, many, many others. Most of these algorithms essentially differ in the way in which they generate proposal, proposal values of the parameters. And these are different ways of generating proposal values for the parameters turn out to be optimal for different types of problems and different situations. So let's now make uh, some simulations and have a look at some of these algorithms. So uh, we are going to use, we, uh, we are going to assume a statistical model in which the, the responsible variable has some probability distribution with parameters theta 1 and theta 2. And the goal is to obtain the two marginal posterior distributions by simulation of these two, two parameters theta 1 and theta 2. And we are going to illustrate it by using uh, three uh, algorithms of the many shown in this uh, site. So the goal, so this is, uh, uh, this is uh, the eventual posterior, joint posterior distribution of the parameters theta 1 and theta 2 for the, uh, so here are the different values of theta 1 and theta 2. Here's the density, 
probability density, and this is the two-dimensional projections of what we have here in the margins are the marginal distributions. This is what we want to obtain as a result of this procedure. So all these are uh, algorithms that we are going to illustrate, which are variants of the basic MCMC, are uh, in this excellent website. So let's have a look first at, at the Metropolis Hastings algorithm, that we about which we are I'm going to say a few words after the uh, numerical simulations. So uh, in this video, we are going to illustrate first step by step, and then uh, in a more rapid way, the standard working of the Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithm. So the idea is that, so here we have the two marginal distributions of two parameters. Uh, this is the joint distribution, a sort of a 3D flattened projection of a probability curve where probability arises from the screen towards you. So we are first going to uh, do it on a step-by-step -step basis. So uh, first starting with two points, with two parameter values. So the, the chain moves from, from this initial value to this uh, new proposal. If that new proposal was accepted, it was uh, the, the arrow turned green. If the proposed new value was rejected, the value uh, turned turn, uh, red. And then we do many, many ways. And as you see, in many different uh, trials, we see the progressive uncovering of the marginal distributions, marginal posterior distributions of the two parameters. Let's put it on autoplay to do it faster. And we will see the progressive uh, uncovering of the true known uh, marginal probability distributions of these uh, two parameters that are uh, symbol shown here. So this is uh, enough. We'll reset it and we'll show uh, the effect of this uh, other, other parameter, the proposal sigma, which means the length of the step by which uh, the chain jumps from one candidate value to the next. So we start doing it with a very fairly small value. Let's do it on a step-by-step -step basis. So you see the next value is very similar to the previous one. So that means that the chain will take a much longer time to actual uncover all possible values on a joint basis of the parameters of the candidate values of the parameters of the two distributions. If we now increase significantly uh, the sigma of the step for the uh, probability distributions, now we can see that the length of the jump is much faster, much longer. leading to many more red uh, arrows, meaning parameters, values that were rejected, but this is, it goes much faster in the way of exploring all the potential values of the pairs of parameter values for this uh, probability model. So the idea is to tune uh, uh, the parameter, the value of the sigma such that roughly 20 to 30 percent of the uh, candidate values are rejected. So this, of course, varies uh, from time to time, from, from problem to problem, and depending on the data and depending on uh, the complexity of the statistical model. So we just use the Metropolis Hastings algorithm. The original uh, algorithm by Metropolis allows symmetrical changes between potential parameters or candidate values of the parameter uh, theta here in this uh, example that were evaluated. This, was, this rule was problematic for certain parameters that have sharp bounds, such as variances that are, are constrained to be positive, dispersion parameters that uh, will appear in, uh, for some other uh, probability distributions in this uh, set of videos, 
that are happen to be required to be uh, strictly positive or correlations that are bound to be between zero, minus one and plus one. So what uh, Hastings did was to modify the, accept, the original acceptance rule uh, of Metropolis Hastings by simply changing the uh, probabilities of going from the, uh, the value A to value B to be different from change from value B to value A. So by having these asymmetric changes, that actually solved the problem. So what, what, what people nowadays call, includes is uh, the Metropolis Hastings algorithm with this modification that you just uh, saw. So Gehman and Gehman propose, propose the Gibbs algorithm for models with many nearly independent parameters. So this uh, again turned out to be a special case of Metropolis Hastings. So let's assume that you have a model where the response variable follows a normal distribution with parameters mu and sigma, mean and uh, standard deviation. Uh, so the equation, the fundamental estimating equation, becomes the posterior the joint posterior of the two parameters given the data it, uh, is proportional to the likelihood of the data given the values of the parameters times the joint prior of the two parameters. Uh, so <coughs> given that these two parameters are statistically independent or assuming that they are nearly independent, the joint complex uh, prior distribution can be decomposed in, in a simpler manner. Uh, as the product of the priors that is a lot simpler to uh, compute. So variants of the Gibbs algorithms allow of the Gibbs algorithm allows dealing uh, with the likelihoods and joint priors when you have uh, correlated parameters as well. So here is an illustration. In this second video, we are going to show uh, the Gibbs sampling algorithm, which turns out to be a special case of the Metropolis Hastings algorithm. The main difference between the two is the way in which the algorithm moves between pairs of consecutive values. Let's uh, show it first and then explain it. So let's go step by step basis. So in order to move from one pair of potential values to the next pair of potential values, the algorithm first moves one in one of the dimensions in one of the parameters and then moves in the second direction of the two parameters. It would be as if instead of going in the straight in the straight red line in this example, it goes as if it was a taxi moving along this block first and along this block uh, the next time. Let's do it again. This the whole thing that changes between Metropolis Hastings and the Gibbs uh, algorithm is a way of generating uh, the parameter, the next uh, candidate value to be evaluated. Now, let's proceed in an automated way to see if it can uncover the marginal distributions of the two parameters of this uh, statistical model. So the Gibbs uh, sampling algorithm turns out to be uh, particularly uh, effective in models with many parameters when those parameters are or close are either independent or close to be statistically independent. But this is uh, probably enough to have an idea. So the next. Uh, variant that we are going to see is called Hamiltonian Mon uh, Monte Carlo and uh, this modifies the rule of for generating candidate parameter values by taking into account the marginal gradients that is the steepness of the probability the uh, the posterior probability distributions for each of the parameters and that allows it to generate a sort of undulating trajectory uh, and to, have, and to make larger jumps in the parameter space, allowing a faster and more efficient exploration of this parameter space to evaluate uh, joint combinations. So what we now include in the, in the, in the acceptance rule is, are these gradients uh, for the parameters A and B. It's a modification of the previous one. Compared to previous al algorithms, Hamiltonian Monte Carlo is one of the latest, but certainly not the last one, 
have a lower risk of falling to local minima and performs better with uh, correlated parameters in uh, complex models. So this is, uh, there is no doubt, there are many, many, many variants of uh, MCMC type algorithm for certain classes of models. Uh, the idea here is not to show a multitude of them, but to give you a gist of what they are. So let's have a look at the Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, which is the one, which is the MC, MCMC type of algorithm that uh, is used in the forthcoming videos of this series. Uh, in this uh, a third a small video, we are going to show simply how the, uh, uh, the workings of the Hamiltonian Monte Carlo algorithm. So first we're going to do it again on a step-by-step -step basis. So what it does is that it uh, takes into account not only the length of the step, but also the gradient of the fastest change of uh, the probability distributions, the, the probability distributions are along the dimensions of each of these, these parameters. This is what is shown as a dotted curve. Let's see it again. So this allows the algorithm to make longer jumps and then to and therefore to explore faster, uh, larger sets of parameter values of uh, the joint posterior distributions of this uh, statistical model. Let's do it now on an autoplay basis and see how efficient this is in order to uncover the final the marginal marginal The two parameters at the bottom, leapfrog steps and leapfrog delta t, allow to essentially uh, regulate the length of the step and the length of the gradient the importance of the gradient when uh, considering the, the next step of the chain in generating the next values of the, of the chain. So uh, let's uh, now uh, see in two long uh, slides, uh, t long tables in two slides, the main differences between the frequentist and the Bayesian uh, uh, frameworks for uh, statistical of statistics. So uh, uh, the goal of the inference in the frequentist uh, framework is to is to obtain the maximum likelihood estimate of the parameter values along with the standard errors. With this uh, with this uh, point estimates under standard error and using uh, a sampling distribution, uh, we make the uh, decisions about uh, the significance or not of parameters. In Bayesian statistics, the goal of the analysis is not a point value for each parameter, but a joint probability distribution, posterior probability distribution of model parameters. The view of probability in the frequentist uh, framework is a probability is the, the uh, aleatory view of probability as a relative frequency of occurrence of a random of a, of a random experiment or observation, and in, and in the Bayesian world is a, a epistemic view, which is a degree of plausibility of occurrence of an event or parameter value. Available data for the frequentist is a single realization of a random process out of many possible data. The inference uh, uses the current data but refers to many potential data that could have been obtained had we sampled the same uh, statistical population again and again. In the case of the Bayesian, Bayesians, Bayesians take data as fixed uh, they, uh, and, uh, and given only once, uh, and, and given only once the data was obtained. The statistical parameters for the frequencies are fixed, but precise values <coughs> of uh, these parameters that bo are both unknown and unknowable. In the case of the Bayesian, the parameters are fixed. These are unknown contest, uh, constants whose values are estimated uh, or estimable with a probability. That probability is the posterior probability distribution. 
So the role of the likelihood uh, function for the frequencies is essential, is the only feature of importance in the statistical inference. For the Bayesians, the likelihood is the way in which uh, the information contained in the data modifies the prior distribution of the parameters. So the uh, inference for the frequencies refers comparing uh, the parameter values with the theoretical sampling distribution. And inference uh, in the Bayesian world uh, is based on the available data based on the posterior distribution. So we can never say that a given hypothesis is true in the frequencies world. We can only state the chances of obtaining this is the p-value. We can only say the values of obtaining potentially more extreme data, uh, assuming a given hypothesis, for instance, this, to be true. In the case of Bayesian statistics, yes, we can calculate the probability that a given statistical hypothesis, such as this one, were true or not. Uh, the measures of precision are totally different in the frequencies and Bayesian uh, uh, stati statistics. In the case of the frequency statistics is the confidence interval, which is an interval that refers to uh, the set of values that a given parameter could obtain if we repeatedly sample the same statistical population again and again. In the case of the uh, Bayesian uh, framework, the credible, inter credible intervals are very simple probability statements that a parameter is in a given range. So in this video, uh, actually rather long, we I talked about parameter estimation, where I mentioned the base rule and one application in a common case and it's used in statistics. Then we uh, explained or argued why we could simplify it uh, in, stati in Bayesian statistics uh, the f fundamental base equation. And then we, uh, we, con we built uh, a Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithm and explained how it works, uh, did some simulations and explained the main differences between uh, the uh, frequentist and the Bayesian uh, frameworks. I hope you, find, you found this uh, video interesting and that you take a look at the coming ones. Thank you very much.